Welcome to the Nerd Tutorial Podcast, a podcast offering nerdy tutorials for people who aren't necessarily nerdy themselves. With you today is your nerdy tutor, George, and with me here as well is my very own woman who any Avenger would love to have as their own mom, my mom. Hey. Welcome. Hi. Alrighty, so you were gone for about two weeks here. Yeah. And in the interim here, we had a little person, we had another person come in and fill in for you. Yep. We talked about some Japanese animation. And this week we're going to talk about Marvel's Endgame. So it's uh, been about two weeks here, so this podcast will have spoilers in it. So we apologize to anybody who hasn't already seen the movie here already. But knowing that going into it here, you should be well aware of what we're going to talk about here today. Um, but by this point here, I don't think anybody has not seen the movie here already. It's already grossed about 2 to $3 billion in revenue over just the course of just two weeks. Well, I was stumped because I went to buy tickets for when we went to see it, and it was your your second time and, and yes. my son John's second time as well seeing it. Mm -hmm. I went to buy tickets, um, you know, eight hours in advance, and there were hardly any seats left. And this is two weeks after the release. Oh, yes. A now, week and a half after the release. Mm -hmm. A week and a half. Yep. And I, mind you, and I've wanted to see it now a second time really badly because I was just enjoying it so much. I just want to absorb it all. And so... Well, and, and what was amazing to me was um, I was in Taipei when it came out, mm -hmm. and it was gangbusters there. We were in on a main street in Taipei that had a theater, and there was there were lines. Yep. Again, I... So huge worldwide. Oh, absolutely. No, again. And, and for the amount of people in it, it has to kind of be because, like, there's a lot of people to pay in this movie. There's there's some cost to putting that together. Yeah, oh, lots and and some interesting little cameos too. Oh, lots lots of cameos again as well. That was very interesting. That you thought, did they write this into the contract when these characters did their movies here, and in some cases did their movies like five, six, seven years ago? Yeah, which is kind of an interesting notion here when you think about it. So, Pretty amazing. Obviously, a lot of forward planning. Um, very much yeah. so, and very much an interesting sort of. Uh, I almost want to be there and it would be there when they did like the casting sort of thing here. Like, we want to do this, this, and this. Well, can we get X, Y, and Z? Let's find out. And we can't get X, we can't get X person. Great. We have to change the entire movie to do Y thing now. So, yeah. But no, I mean, the brain trust that's been in these Marvel movies has been um, very good. Actually, what's interesting is that the person who did do the casting director for a lot of this is the same one since Iron Man. So, well, uh, yeah, but okay, so it's the same one since Iron Man. Does that mean they signed up um, Gwyneth Paltrow for, you know, nine movies when they signed her up for the first one? I doubt they signed her up for nine movies, but they probably signed her up for, I'm pretty sure, at least the first two movies here. Okay. And then basically was like, do you want to be in more? Because while she's not like an integral part of, the, I mean, she's a very important part of the Iron Man continuity. Mm -hmm. um, I could imagine that it'd be somewhat easy to, if you don't necessarily have to have her, you don't necessarily write her in. Much the same way like Natalie Portman, in, who was in uh, the Thor movies here as Jane Foster, which is somewhat, I mean, you know, which is Thor's yeah. love interest. Outside of the second movie here, she never shows up ever again. And they only ever say like, oh yeah, no, she dumped you, you know, like stuff like that. But and, she's in there for a wink of an eye. For, and in that, actually, in the in Endgame here, that's actually reused footage from the second movie. Uh, there was actually, like, extra filming that they didn't end up using, and so they just spliced that in there. Oh, that's interesting. Um, but, yeah, it's one of those things where, again, like, yeah, Natalie Portman just doesn't want to do Marvel movies for whatever reason. And they have a, you know, there's... There's a great little bit here where, in the comics, where Thor becomes unworthy to wield the hammer. Yeah. And she ends up picking it up instead because she's worthy to pick up the hammer. Well, so we're going to talk some more about the hammer later? We can talk about the hammer later. It'll be very, okay. it's, it's, it becomes important. Okay, okay. so. Um, so there's a lot of characters in here. I'm going to only list the major ones here, which include people like Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, Thor, Black Widow, Hawkeye. Now, these are the original six that were in the first Avengers here. These are probably get the people who have been holding on to their characters the longest here. Um, with the exception of maybe Bruce Banner, because, like, it was Edward Norton in the first Hulk movie, right. but even then, like, the first Hulk movie doesn't really feel like a Marvel movie in its own right in some cases. 
Okay. Um, but then after that, you've got uh, War Machine, Ant Man, Captain Marvel, Nebula, Rocket, uh, Pepper Potts, and then Thanos. So these are pretty much all the major major players here that I was uh, able to remember at least. Unless okay. there's, there's more that obviously do come up later. Well, yeah, you have you have Captain Marvel. Absolutely. Um, so let's just start off right. Let's just go through the plot here, essentially. So. At the beginning of the movie here, you have Hawkeye out with his family and what looks like on his farm in a picnic. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess they got they get snapped away and they just disappear. Right. And Hawkeye just apparently is just like, wow, where did everybody go? It doesn't realize what happened until obviously a little bit later. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of interesting that if you notice for it, if you look for it, you can kind of see the little trails of dust as they disappear. Yeah. Um, kind of the background, and so like we're all kind of clued in. It's like, oh, that was Thanos, and then everyone, and then he's just like, no. So th that sends him on a deep end, unfortunately. Sends all of them on the deep end. I mean, really, that's I think that's one of the pre uh, premises of the movie. Is um, I mean, we can talk about this more later, but Thanos um, eventually figures out that that grief is too strong an emotion for people to recover from. He took too much away from them. Yeah. So, um, when we get back to Iron Man here, him and Nebula are in the Guardians of the Galaxy ship. It's broken down, though, so they're literally just stuck in space. Um, running out of air. They're running out of air, and Iron Man's basically resigned himself that, you know, hey, this will be my last will and testament. Yeah. Um, and then, kind of seemingly out of nowhere, uh, Captain Marvel shows up, which is, he comes down and saves him. Uh... You have kind of everybody back at Avengers H HQ for a short period of time, which is in upstate New York, I believe. And Tony is just, I don't know if he's got uh, PTSD or something, but he is just racked with uh, racked with uh, upsetness at, Ca at Captain America over Tha over Thanos and him winning and all that stuff here. Well, I think, isn't it really that, that he lost Spider-Man? Well, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure a lot of it said he lost Spider Man, that he that he got beaten in whatever way it was. He feels responsible. He feels very responsible, and then, um, but part of the problem was is that in earlier movies, Iron Man wanted to wanted to try to safeguard the planet because he kind of had a impression of this happening, anyways. Yeah. And Captain America was basically like, "No, you can't do, you can't do preemptive strikes at all, or you can't." You know, what you're doing is basically, I understand... You can't put a force field around it. No. I mean, I understand you want to try to protect everything ahead of time, but if you're trying to protect everything, you're actually being, you know, you're actually doing something in the opposite. And you're basically forcing your protection on other people, whether it's necessary or not. They're losing but, liberties. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then that's Cap's thing at the end of the day, you know. Captain America is supposed to be the best of all of us here, regardless of whatever it is that's happening. Yeah. Um... So everybody but Iron Man then goes into space. Fi they find Thanos, and Thanos is kind of just in a t-shirt and farming, which is kind of interesting. He's living. He's living his uh, his new life as a as an agrarian. Yep. Very much, and he's. Um, you can see that he's injured in some sort of way because he's hobbling up the stairs it doesn't yeah. look like he's using his left hand very much if at all he looks like he's um it looks like the effects of what was the last the the snap here because if you go back to the uh infinity war when he snapped the gauntlet and a lot of his left arm is looks just burned and charred like the energy yeah. was too much for him to to overcome at any particular point here um and so um the Avengers get there, and Thor, in very quick fashion here, chops off his arm with the Infinity Gauntlet. It's then you learn that when you turn it over, it's like, the stones are gone. Yeah. And Thanos basically explains, yeah, I destroyed them. I didn't need them anymore. What I did was, you know, I did what I needed to do. And it was done. And he didn't want anybody else to have the, the well, ability. He, well, yeah. he, well, he didn't need them anymore. He did what he wanted to do with them at the end of the day. And there was no real purpose or need for them later at all later on here so um that being said um there's a short little monologue back and forth here and 
basically at the end of it here, Thor just takes his hammer and chops off his head. Um, and just kills him right away, unceremoniously. Um, which is interesting because back in the first movie, Thanos basically, at the moment of snap, tells Thor here, like, you should have gone for the head. Yep. And so Thor this time learned he went for the head. Except Thanos is, is alive later. Yeah, but that's going to be explained later. So. Okay. All right. All right. I just, just don't want to confuse people. No, no, yeah. Okay. So, so this version of Thanos is dead. Okay. And then the title screen comes up and it goes five and it just holds there for a while. Years later. later. And it just kind of holds you on there because you're just like, time passes, five months, weeks, years. And you're just like, oh. Yeah. And the world seems to have changed quite a bit i mean like like what happens when half the population disappears does that mean how do do governments still kind of exist or not exist do how do you know how do different things go on like how do you feel the voids how do you yeah yeah how do you how do you feel the voids of like different kind of stuff that happens here like clearly people after the five years here people have gotten back to a point where like yeah we can still have a sustainable sort of world on a certain level but like things are not the same i mean like things are not clearly being upkept quite the way they were beforehand um there's just a general depression oh absolutely again it's a a little you know it's it's a little more it's a little weird and odd that all of it still just kind of is just happening in a vacuum almost well Um, i i my my one thought was i bet the bars are doing well um Maybe. you know because because it seemed like everybody had this malaise mm-hmm. that um that had sort of taken over yeah i mean like caps uh in a support group oddly enough they were leading mm-hmm. a support group uh natasha is talking with the other people from the you know the remaining people there so like uh, Okoye from wakanda she's talking with captain marvel nebula and rocket who are still alive um, she's sort of keeping tabs on everybody and sending people where they need to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like she's like she's like she's trying to keep it all together as best as she can, yeah. and everyone's kind of like, you know, if you weren't here, we would just we would all just move on. Nothing would change at all. You realize that. And, yeah, and I think she's doing it more out of necessity for a purpose in her own life because she's been one of those characters that has always been like I never had a life outside of being this. You know, spy don't, assassin. Don't know who I am. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, if I wasn't doing this, then I wasn't. Would I wouldn't be doing anything at all. Yeah. Um. And so Cap goes and visit her, visits her, and shortly before this, though, we get to Ant Man. Now, Ant Man was out, not in the first movie at all. If you watched Ant Man the Wasp, you realize that Ant Man was trapped in the quantum realm, which is a very, very very, 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 like, you could vary in, like, another 100,000 times. Small yeah. world. Yeah. Um, and we were supposed to be taken out. He, The people who were outside of it were snapped away. So yeah. they disappeared. And so so nobody like, nobody even knows he's gone. No, or everyone thinks he got snapped away. That, yeah, the logical conclusion the would log- be he got snapped away. And and he's in a store, in a, in a van, in a storage space. Which is interesting how they figured out that, you know, how he got to his storage space and how they... Because re- if you look on the tag on there, it literally does say Lang on there. So, like, yeah. clearly it's his van of some sort. Or somebody found the van and labeled it for him. Yeah. But I imagine there's a lot of these storage spaces that are just that with a lot of other people's stuff in it. So Yeah. People so didn't like, know what to do with things, weren't ready to toss it. Yeah. Okay. So, um Thankfully, a small little rat activates the van and shoots him out of the quantum realm. Yep. And he makes his way back home, and you can see some of the, the you can. He's in the in excuse me San Francisco here, and there's a huge monument to all the people that got snapped away. Yeah. Um, On Chrissy Field. Yeah, which is, um, you know, like if you're you know kind of very vaguely rem- reminiscent of uh, the Vietnam War Memorial. Yeah, with all the uh, names. Yeah. yeah. Um. So he runs home and he finds his, you know, his daughter, which is supposed to be like 10, 11 years old or so, give or take. Uh-huh. And she's now like 16. So she looks like her mom. Yeah. And, you, and initially I thought it was his, his, her, the mom originally, but no, it's the daughter. Yeah. So like 
so much time has passed now that his daughter is not much older, clearly. And so you can see like the first real effects of the time jump here. Um, which I thought was very nice because again he has again in the movies in the Ant Man movies like his daughter is a very critical portion to his life, mm-hmm. um, and so the fact that like she was still alive for him was very a very reassuring thing. Cause yeah. in, in Ant Man could have very well just been like you know what no like my daughter is still here that's the most important thing to me here. Yeah, but he doesn't so he goes to New York and drives to New York with the van. And that's where the kind of the movie really kind of kicks into plot here. So, um, Ant Man discuss, discusses that you can go to the quantum realm, and theoretically you might be able to do time travel because for him it's only been instead of five years, it was only like five hours he was stuck in the quantum realm. So it wasn't that long of a time for him. So maybe because time acts differently in the quantum realm, you might be able to use it to move through time, perhaps. A lot of very very super sciencey stuff here. Yes. Um, Do not bother to try to understand. No, no, it, it it does not help. I don't. I think it actually deters in some cases. Suspend reality. Oh yeah, suspend your disbelief of reality. Yes. Um, so then we got Captain America, Ant Man, and Black Widow need somebody who's really, really smart. So they go to Iron Man, and Iron Man's actually in a you know Tony Stark's in a very unique place. He's in a cabin that's kind of in the woods, he's off got a the farmhouse on a lake. Yeah, and he's got a five-year-old. He's got like a five-year-old daughter. Yes, and her name is Morgan, just like the dream he had mm-hmm. about the well, about Ed, the eccentric uncle of Pepper Potts. Well, but but he had a he, he had a dream at the beginning of of uh, the last movie, mm-hmm. Infinity Wars. Um, at the very beginning of the movie, he he tells Pepper that he has a dream um, uh, that he had a daughter named Morgan or a child named Morgan. Very, you know, very good at character, very good acting from this small child who's yeah. maybe at most six or seven. Yeah. And um, like it's just one of these things where it's like, mm, we're going to see her again somewhere. Yeah. Um, so, um, but yeah, so again, like. Captain America, Ant-Man, Black Widow, they all get to Tony Stark, and Tony Stark basically is like, no, not interested. Can't be done. Can't. Can't be, will not do it, because again, like, his concern at the end of the day is he doesn't want to lose what he's already gotten. Well, and his concern really is if you go back in time, he goes back to a time when his daughter wasn't born yet. And does that ever actually happen then at that point? Yeah. Yeah. So, you totally understand what he's trying to what what his concern is? Oh no, absolutely. It's a logical concern. Yeah, no. Again, it's, it's, it's a rational one from him yeah. at that point here yeah. too. I mean, like, you know, um, so that doesn't work. So they said they need they'll go get another big brain, and they go visit the Hulk, who has embraced his Hulkness. Yes. Oh my gosh, I loved this version of the Hulk, because because he's he's. Bruce Banner and he's the Hulk all merged into one. Hulk is wearing glasses um, and nice suits, and um, and and uh, he has just allowed himself to stay big and green. And and he's very confident about it too. I mean, if you notice through a lot of the other movies, Bruce Banner being Bruce Banner is very nervous and very kind of well. And sometimes mean. he can't change. And well, he can't change. Sometimes he can't change. But again, he's very kind of concerned that he's got to keep himself in check and keeping yeah. himself in check is actually for him a lot of work so he doesn't turn into this monster at all and now that he's just the monster full time but himself here apparently like he's super he's like he's much happier in life almost about it he was like the only person who um seemed better off after the snap than before yeah just, i can definitely see that yeah yeah he i i loved the idea of self acceptance. I like the notion here that the kids are kids are like willing to just kind of walk up to him and be like, Hey, can we get a photo with Take you? Take a Hulk? selfie? Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, Yeah, sure. It even dabs at one point, which I thought was dumb and stupid, but it was just like it's pretty you know, cute. It's it's but it's also just like, okay, it's a guy it's a nerd who finally got cool and how do you how does yeah. a nerd be cool and yep. you know, so I thought that was perfect as well. Um, and Hulk's basically like, yeah, I kind of know what we're doing here, but I really, in all honesty, don't. 
Yeah, he's he's reluctant. He's very 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 reluctant here. So, um, they go they go back to Avengers HQ to try to resolve to get that done here, to try to test to see if it's even doable at the end of the day. Um, meanwhile, back with Iron Man. Oh God! Every single time, like Tony Stark is with his daughter here, it's literally the cutest thing in the world, and it's just like it's it's just ever so perfect every time. I love you, three thousand. Oh yeah, I I even love it. So back, so just the scene beforehand where like they're all talking in Tony Stark's um, patio or or something. Basically, you know, little child Morgan here comes up. It's like mommy told me to come and save you. Yep. I thought that was like, oh. And that's when the other Avengers have kind of cornered him on this, on at his lake house. Yeah. yeah. So, but they're, they're ever so cute. Um, but Tony Stark has basically come with, basically couldn't let an idea go. Yeah. And started kind of meddling with the science here and figured out, yes, this is all doable. Yep. Um, uh, because he's got a picture of him and... Uh, Peter Parker with some sort of award of some sort, and it's a very cute photo of them. And he's he can't, he doesn't, you know, like he can't let this go. And he's got this kind of good scene with Pepper Potts, where with his wife at this point here, where he's basically like, you know, I could just put a pin in this and be done, put this in a box, throw it into the middle of the lake, and be done with it here. Yep, and then go to sleep and then go to bed. But then Pepper Potts has the notion here, he's like, yeah, you could, but would you actually get any sleep? Yeah. And you get the feeling that it really is about about Spidey. Yeah, no, again, no. It's very much about Spider Man. It's very much about Tony. I think racked with guilt that has been he's been yeah. trying to cover up for years. I mean, yeah, this is a guy who at one point here in the comics was very much drinking himself to death on a certain level because he was so unhappy with his life and everything in his life had just been, you know, just yeah. Um, so him, so he gets back to Avengers HQ, basically explains to Captain, Captain America, hey, I figured it out. I figured out how to do the time travel to make it work. Um, and um, they reconcile their differences here, essentially, to get to get to move forward. Um, and, and Iron Man also gives Captain America back the shield. Which was taken away in uh, winter when the last uh, movie Civil War, because basically, like it was the shield his dad made for Captain America. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I don't know if necessarily like Iron Man has ownership of the shield necessarily, but Cap was not. You know, I don't need the shield to be Captain America. I guess so. Um, so at this point here, they start going through all the stuff that they need to do. It's so they start getting the team kind of back together on a certain level um, and they um, go to get uh, Hawkeye now again Hawkeye had his family disappeared and he's um, basically kind of been just on this murder spree of villains and he's like gang a mem- Tokyo vigilante or something so what he is is in the comics he takes over the pers- he takes over the he, he stops being Hawkeye. He becomes a new character called Ronin because he, he passes the Hawkeye mantle on to another person. Okay. Um, his protege initially, um, and I guess at one point here in the comics he dies, but then comes back to life, which is again not unusual in comics. Um, and he because goes. He can. So he goes by the name. Of, so he then goes starts going by the character of, by the name of Ronin. He's a samurai ninja sort of guy that just takes out villains and criminals. Seems to me like a yakuza. Uh, well, they were they were dealing with Yakuza, so and yeah, then, okay. Um, and I have to find the the one actor's name because that's he's up there with Ken Watanabe is one of my favorite Japanese actors. He's just in a lot of samurai and period piece stuff. Uh, is so good. Um, I cannot remember his name to save my life right now. It's okay. Um, but the so Black Widow finds him, Hawkeye, and basically explains to Hawkeye like. Look, we ha we we think we figured out a way to do this, and Hawkeye's very much no. Don't do that. Don't do what? Don't give me hope. Yeah. Because he's he's in such a bad place for the last five years that he he can't um, he he can't have hope in his heart because it'll hurt him so much. Yeah. If, especially if it doesn't work. 
Um, so it becomes the first test for the actual, like, will this thing actually work? And so he volunteers for it. He goes running into it. Yeah, he's very much of the notion here that, like, look, if I have, if this is, if this doesn't work, then I'm dead, and that actually makes me, would make me happier. Yeah. Um, but lo and behold, they send him back to the farm, and they send him back in time, and he can hear his children's voice. He runs into the house to go see his children, and he gets ported back to the present day because he's only supposed to be there for just a couple for like a minute or two to yeah. see if it actually works yeah um, and unbeknownst to him he's actually got like I think one of his son's uh, baseball gloves yes and brings that back with him so now they know oh hey you can bring stuff back with yeah. you so now that's even more important so um, now they decide they're going to have to do a time heist and so now they have to get the band back together to do it well they need to collect all the stones, mm -hmm. which means they need to know where all the stones are at a particular time. But before that, they got to go. They got to go get back and get some people. So okay. they reach out to Rocket and Nebula. They come back, and um, there's a very fun little scene where like Ant Man's got a pair of tacos and he's trying to. He's going to start eating the tacos outside, but uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy ship comes in and kind of I guess blows all the contents of the tacos That's out. It. Yeah, yeah, and uh, let us flying. And so Nebula passes by him. And is like, and apparently, I guess she's got the radio with like War Machine and like, hey, be careful. There's an idiot here. You know, War Machine just lands right in front of him, scaring the crap out of Paul Rudd, and all of his taco stuff goes flying everywhere. Even more so than the first time. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and then Hulk kind of passes by, and he's just looking like he's like like he's on a college campus, like just walking by. He's got like a handful of something in his hand. He takes two tacos and he gives it to Ant Man. It was just a yeah. cute little scene. It was here. a cute it's, scene. There's a lot of that kind of like little cute little stuff that it she is, does. It is. It is. It is delightfully campy. Yes, I, and I don't mind campy when it's just kind of being fun about it. I, yeah. I, like. Definitely does not take itself too seriously. No, and I think that's seriously, but not. I think at the end of the day here, like it knows when it's time to have kind of light moments and let the and let the characters just kind of like interact with each other in such a way that just kind of reminds you that they're still very much this is not superheroes they're still people first yeah it humanizes yeah. yeah and that they can just very much just still just be interacting with one another um so uh hulk and, and rocket have to go find thor <laughs> and so they go they go to new asgard so apparently some of the asgards these guys guardians lived Oddly enough, their ship got blown up, but somehow some of them lived. Yep. And so now they're in this place um, where, again, I mean, um, Odin, which was Thor's father, basically yeah. said, like, rebuild Asgard here. It doesn't have to be necessarily a place. It's just wherever everybody lives. lives. Yeah. And so they rebuild it here. They're into, like, a little Norwegian, like, fishing town almost. Yeah. Um, and the Hulk and Rocket are on the back of some guy's truck, and... Hulk obviously being the mass that he is, it's raiding down the truck and it's literally, it's tailpipe, it's skidding. Yeah, it's having a hard time bouncing along. Yeah. yeah. Um, they learn from Valkyrie, who's kind of leading the town here, like, he comes back every once a month. And you're, like, thinking initially, like, oh, he must be off, like, in the woods or something like that, or he's out in the ocean or something. He's out fighting evil. Yeah, he's just... And then you go to, and you go to this cabin that apparently he's just in, like, far away from town... And you find Thor, and Thor has let himself go. Thor has a pot belly. His hair is just disgusting. He's, he's got he's got the. Uh, he hasn't bathed it in a while. No, he's got. And he's got two guys with him. So the two guys with him are from uh, Thor Ragnarok. Okay. One of the rock guy is literally the guy who directed it. It's okay. Ty Wakiti. Um, or he's doing the voice for you here, and apparently they're just hanging out, drinking beer. Playing Fortnite of all things, <laughs> and like, and just like away from the world. Like you thought, like Thor was like, no, he was he was in a bad place, but he was like grieving over everything in like a very macho sort of way. Because again, like Thor's like, yeah. But then you see him, and you're just like, no, no, it was the exact opposite. Thor just let himself go. Yeah. Oh, and, and in such a bad way too, and. He's but even, he's handled with levity. He's he's handling it with some kind of levity, like, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. 
I'm fine. I'm drunk all the time, but I'm fine. Yeah. But we can fix everything. You you can fix the internet and the cable. All oh, those things have been out for weeks. It's like, no, no. We can fix what happened yeah. with Thanos. Um, and it's one of these things where, like, no, don't do that. But, but, but you know, Thor feels responsible for what? For for not having gotten and not for not having gone uh, gone for the head. Yeah, no. Again, it all kind of ties back to uh, again, like he feels just immensely responsible for everything that happened because again, like he's also again Thor's also one of the characters here as well, and it's kind of painted throughout the sh- throughout this movie here and in other movies that he's a he's a person that's had a lot expected of him because he's the yeah. son of Odin and he's going to be the Ruler, king. he's going to be yeah. the king of the Asgards and the ruler of the Asgards. He's got this noble sort of job, job that he has to do, but like he's worthy. Yeah, that he's well, and that he's worthy, but like he doesn't really know if that's what he wants to do with his own life. And it's very much everyone else has agreed that like, yeah, you're going to be king one day, but he kind of like he doesn't know what it means to be king at all in a lot of cases, or even what it means to be a leader. Yeah. Um, and the fact that he couldn't save all these other people, he lets, he just, again, like, he just keeps letting people down all the time, yeah. you know? So, and, and everybody he loves or cares for gets killed because of events that happen around him. So, like, yeah. it's very, very understandable. Like, if you think everything in the world goes wrong because you are there, that you would want to eject yourself from that to avoid having that happen to anybody else. Well, and, and, and I kind of took it as if you want to fail, Fail, fail big time. Oh yeah. Which was kind of where he was at. Mm-hmm. A very logical extreme for him. Yeah. Um, so they get everybody back together, and so they have to pl- they have to plan time heist. So they have to figure out where all the stones are. So um, obviously, Thor tells them that the reality where the reality stone was. Um, there was an Asgard with his girlfriend Jane Foster at the time. Um. They figure out that the power gem and the soul, or the power stone and the soul stone, are in space on these remote planets. Yep. Um, and in kind of like a moment of levity here, they realize, oh wait, the space stone, the time stone, and the mind stone are all in the same place at one point. Yeah. In time, so when they all realize all this here, they basically figure out okay we're going to split ourselves up three groups in three groups and we're going to go collect these stones to snap everybody back yep and so you have let's see here you have captain so you're going to have rocket rocket and thor they're going to go to asgard to get the reality and they're already buds because they've been yeah yeah i don't know if they're buds necessarily because um but they've met each other before, and they yeah. they were interacting with each other a lot in Infinity War. So right. like they they already know each other to yeah. some extent here. Yeah. Um, and Rocket's very serious, while Thor is not in a great place. So it seems like a logical yeah. person you'd want to have there. Yeah. Um, you've got Hawkeye, Black Widow, War Machine, and Nebula. They're going to go to space to go get the the stones that are in space. Um, and then you've got Captain America, Iron Man, Ant Man, and the Hulk. Which are going to go to New York, 2012, which is when the first Avengers happened at, to mm-hmm. go get the three stones that are there, which are the Space Stone, Mind Stone, and Time Stone here. So we'll kind of break this down into individual stuff, because they kind of jump around a little bit. Uh-huh. But we'll just kind of break it down here. So Rocket and Thor go to get the Reality Stone. Thor is back home on Asgard. Yeah. If he just kind of laid low, he'd be back home. Yeah, he could just hang. He just hang, and of course, of course. Now, mind you, even though he's gone back in time, mm-hmm. he is the overweight. Um, he's in sweats. He's got like matted hair, greasy. Oh, just greasy, disgusting hair. Is the beard is the set as a mom? Beard, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he's 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 gone back in time, but he's he's not. He's not in a good place, anyways. And to be able to go back in time, like he. He's literally having panic attacks, yep. which is kind of interesting. And Rocket's like, dude, I understand you like effed up and everything, but we have a chance to fix everything. Yeah. So is it too much to ask you to kind of like hang, to get yourself together so we can try to save my family and everybody else here as well at the same yeah. time? Yeah. And Thor's like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. 
no, I can't. Yeah. And then he's like, having a tough time. Yeah, and he sees his mom, who he loves like the most most dearest person in the world to him. Yeah. And um, he kind and of, she didn't die through the snap. She died before that. Yeah, she so she died in Thor: The Dark World. So this would have been so they're technically in what would be. 2013 so like all the events that are now taking place in the marvel are taking place in 2023 here because again if we assume that if any war happened in 2018 five years Before, later it means yeah, okay. 2023 okay so um so this is all he's basically been about 10 years since he's seen his mom which for some people is a lifetime yeah um so he gets to have this very sweet moment with his mom he gets to um who, have, who imparts the the ultimate wisdom? Be yourself. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Rocket's like, great, I can't deal with this guy. So he goes and gets the Reality Stone from Jane Foster. Um, links back up with Thor, and Thor basically is like, yeah, yeah, I can be myself. Um, and then he reaches out, and Rocket's got like no idea what he's doing. And the mom's like, oh wait, this just takes a moment. And he gets Mjolnir. So he gets the hammer and he's like, ha, I'm still worthy. So he grabs Mjolnir and he goes back, and either he turned back to 2013 with the reality stone and Thor's got Mjolnir now again. So he's got yeah. his hammer again. Which, again, for him, he hasn't had for like five years as well. Right. So so not only did he sort of lose his identity, but he lost his hammer and and so he he really doesn't know who he is or no, didn't he, know who he is. He's got his axe Stormbreaker, which he's using to open beer bottles with, but Right. But <laughs> it worked for that. It though. it does. But again, like at the end of the day here, like Mjolnir was this thing that he's had for like his entire life. So like it's it's such an important element to him. And even when it was yeah. broken to him, to him in Thor Ragnarok was like mm, sort of yeah. thing. Um so next we've got um we got the. They go back and so Iron Man, Ant Man, Thor, and Captain America all go back to 2012. This is during the height of the battle for New York, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, the notion here is that Hulk's gonna go get the Time Stone, Captain America's gonna go get the staff, uh, which is, has the Mind Stone and Loki staff does, and then right. Captain America and Ant Man are gonna go get the uh, Space Stone. Okay. Um, so Hulk goes to go meet to go to Bleecker Street, which is where Doctor Strange lives at, and he finds the Ancient One, Tilda Swinton, who was in the original Doctor Strange movie. And she's basically like, well, I wouldn't go in there if I were you. And Hulk sees the necklace that she's wearing, which is the real, which is the Eye of Agamotto, uh, which has got the time stone in it, and is basically like, ah, I'm actually here for that. Yeah. And so they end up having this... Um, what ends up happening here, which is actually very interesting here, that uh, the Ancient One pushes the Hulk out of his own body to the astral plane. Yeah. And so he's just regular Bruce Banner again, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, And so they have this long, prolonged conversation about how I can't give you the stone because if you take the stone, my reality basically goes poof. Yeah. If all the stones are missing, then it creates this alternate timeline that really bad and dark stuff happens at. Meanwhile, Hulk basically, you know, Bruce Banner tells her, he's like, yes, we'll take the stones for now, but then we'll put them all back. back and we'll give them back to you. And, like, it never happened. So, like, you'll get the stones back eventually. You, you'll, you'll get the stones back right away as soon as we're done with it. Because the way that time works, you can move back in time to the point in which we took it and give it back to you then. Yeah. Um. And even then, the ancient one's like, "No, can't do that." Even yeah, how can I? How will I know you will be successful at all? You know. And they eventually, you know, the ancient ones kind of, I think, already looked through time already with the time stone and learned that Doctor Strange is going to come and inherit the her mantle at the end of the day, the role of like the yeah. Sorcerer Supreme and supposed to be in achieving quotes that he's supposed to be the best of us, whether that means like the best of humanity or the best wizard of all of us, whichever right. one necessarily. And they come to find out here that Doctor Strange gave the stone willingly to Thanos because he did at the end of the in the Infinity yeah. War he gives the stone away and everyone's very much of the confusion like why did he give that away why would you why would you give that up so willingly because because he's seen the outcomes and it's the only outcome that works precisely and now that's hinted at in the in Infinity War and it's basically proven in here at this point here yeah. 
Age One's like, well, he wouldn't give away the stone willingly unless he knew there was a purpose to it here. He wouldn't, yeah. he wouldn't just give away such a, a powerful tool. And then you come to realize that, no, that's how they're going, you know, that Dr. Strange has already seen the outcome, so he knows what's going to happen. So that's yeah. why this was important. Um, so she gives Hulk the stone, which is interesting that the green guy gets the green stone. I know. I loved that idea. I, I thought that I thought it was very cl- cute and clever. So, um, and so now they've got the time stone. The Hulk returns back to the time, mm-hmm. 2023. Um, Captain America goes to get the staff. Or before this, let's go back to Ant Man and Iron Man actually, because there's a funny little bit here that I didn't put down. I just remembered. So, Ant Man. Um, Ant Man basically is going to sneak into the where they're holding because they've got a box that's holding the space to, the tesseract, right. and basically the notion is that we're gonna he's going to go in and kind of get into Tony Stark, and he's going to make Tony Stark have a heart attack, um, essentially, which is going to cause a distraction, which will allow Iron Man to kind of come in, take the case, and then leave shortly thereafter. Um, well, Captain America to take the case and leave shortly after. No, no, no. He's gonna, he's gonna. He's Captain oh, okay. America's gonna get the staff. Iron Man's okay. gonna get the Tesseract. Okay. Because they put the staff in another case that's being taken by a Shield agents. We're actually agents of Hydra from the Winter Soldier. Right. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but the entire scene where they're putting everything away, which is the very end of uh, the first Avengers, where they're all kind of like, con- like cornered Loki into a corner, basically, and Loki's like, "Okay, I'll have that drink now." And, that ends the first, the kind of what ends the major yeah. portion of that movie. There, um, <laughs> they're looking at Captain America, and they're basically Ant Man and Iron Man are basically like, "Damn, that that costume didn't do anything for you, man!" Like, because it's so tight on him that first yeah. costume from Avengers, and Ant Man's like, "No, no, no, no! I think you look awesome, Cap. As far as I'm concerned, that's America's ass, or that's America's butt." Which becomes a a, a joke. A joke later on, yes. yeah. So. Um, so what ends up happening here is that um, they go down. They're going to go down the elevator to go down to the first level, and they're basically they look at Hulk. It's like, no, no, Hulk, Hulk, you have to take the stairs. You're too heavy for the elevator, elevator. here. And Hulk's, you know, this is this is 2012. Hulk is like, oh, puny stairs. I hate stairs. And comes down the stairs here. Meanwhile, back on the first floor here, um, you've got the direct, not the you've got the agency director of Shield, which is. Um, Robert Redford, Redford, yeah, which is amazing nice that they cameo. got that they got a re, they got a cameo out of Robert, Robert Redford here, and mind you, like it's probably been like four years since they did yeah. Winter, four or five years since they did Winter Soldier. So like, they got him back again. That's really cool because yeah. he hasn't really done a whole lot of movies between this. Well, he's kind of an old guy at this. Point. No, no, no. I mean, he's mostly retired. I would imagine for the most part here, but again, like. It's really cool that you got that he got to be there. I'm sure it was just like, hey, you want to come in for a day and do this? Yeah. Which was really kind of cool. It, it was cool. So it was one of my favorite cameos. One a very yeah. great little cameo there. And so, um, what ends up happening is that they create uh, they cause a heart attack in Tony Stark, which makes him drop the case and creates this huge distraction for the 2012 Iron Man. Right. That's where 2023 Iron Man comes in, takes the case, and starts walking away. But as he's walking away, he apparently gets right by where the stairwell is, which is an uh-huh. space for a stairwell. Hulk smashes it open and runs out, knocks him down, and knocks the case away. Loki, who's kind of like handcuffed and got a mask on him so he can't talk, sees the space stone kind of like trickle by his feet. He's like, oh, yoink, grabs it and disappears away. Yeah. So it leads to this question of like how much did the change to the future but, like, I got to think that, like, at the end of the day here, as much as a lot of people want to say, like, oh, Loki's still alive now because he disappeared. Like, no, we don't actually know that. And if you think about the logical events that happened, like, if Thanos did get all the stones at one point here. Yeah, so we know, yeah. So, so, whether, so whether, like, Loki had it with him or was retaken at one point here or another, like, there's time continuum questions. There's, there's time yeah. continuum questions. This will lot, probably be answered a lot more in later movies. Um, but for now, like, I, I like to think that Loki is is still kind of gone. But if he comes back, like, yeah, he gets to come back. We all like Loki. Yeah. Because that's his thing. He always keeps coming back. He's died several times. Oh, yeah. Um, but um, 
So basically, Ant Man and Iron Man failed to get the Space Stone, and now they don't know where the Space Stone is. Is now in 2012, and they're out of luck. Yeah. They don't know where to get it from. Meanwhile, uh, Captain America is going to go collect the Mind Stone, Mind Stone from the Shield agents, which are actually Hydra agents. So it's almost a literal recreation of the scene from Winter Soldier where he's walking into the elevator and they're going to have a fight in the elevator. Well, and your brother actually had me watch that scene before we went to the movie. Mm -hmm. So he had me watch the famous elevator scene. Yeah, which is a great little scene when you consider that they had a fight in an elevator. Yep. Um, And it's like everyone starts reaching for their weapons almost. Yeah. Again, they're all agents of HYDRA but they're also like she, they're undercover shield agents. Yeah. And so like there's this kind of tension here that like does Cap know who we are? Is Cap going to stop us here all of a sudden? Um and Captain America is basically like look, change of plans. I'm going to take this I'm going to take uh control of staff and deliver it to the HQ here. Yeah. Cuz they think there might be somebody who's going to steal the staff. Yeah. Um then yeah. they don't believe him initially and so that's why they start reaching for their weapons and then they he kind of leans into Agent Sitwell, which is the yeah. one guy here who's basically the leader of it here, basically leans in very closely and goes, Hail Hydra. And then he looks and he's like, oh. And that's what convinces him to give the box, which is a great little touch-off because in 2016 here, 2017, there was a Captain America comic where at the very end of it here, at the very end of the comic, which and you would have to wait another month to see the next step, the chapter, the next book of it here. Installment, yeah. Um, Captain America basically looks at everybody and says, Hail Hydra. And then, like, it just ends shortly after with no explanation of what's going on. So another great little touch and nod to the comic books was always. So, like, you know, I I almost wonder if um, when they're writing these movies here that, like, how much of the Marvel brain trust is in there writing the movies for with the directors here, like, in a lot of cases. Well, and are the comics, um, you know, which which impacts which? Yeah, no, again, I mean, like, very much so. Yeah. so yeah, no, so that's a great little scene here. So Captain America's basically got the staff, but he runs across the 2012 Iron Man. So you, or excuse me, 2012 uh, Captain America. So now Captain America's got to fight his Captain counterpart, America, Captain yeah. America. Um, and they fight on a very equal level plane. In 2012, Captain America's like, I can do this all day long. And 2023, Captain America's like, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. So they have this fight, and um, they it f- looks like they fall off what feels like 10, 20 stories, stories to the yeah. ground. You know, and like <sighs> Captain America, I guess. Yeah. Um, 2012 has got, 2012 Captain America's got uh, our version of Captain America in like a, in like a sleeper hold, mm-hmm. and basically what happens here is that 2023 says Bucky's still alive, which causes 2012 Captain America to be like, what? You know, if yeah, that distract him. Pause for a second. Yeah. Pause for a second. You know, pull his elbow back to hit him in the head. 2023 grabs the staff and basically puts 2012 to sleep, which is a great little thing. And this is where we get a callback to a joke that we had probably 20, 10, 20 minutes ago in which Captain America now looks down at his counterpart into the other costume is basically like yeah that really is America's ass yep yeah <laughs> it's pretty cute um, so they kind of Ant-Man, Iron Man and Captain America kind of all connect back together and realize that they don't have the space stone so how are they going to get the space stone well what's been established here is that um, in order to do this whole entire time travel thing you need what they call PIM particles which are what Ant-Man's sort of thing is that allows him to go into the quantum realm and shrink right. up and down here and they have just enough pin particles because they can't make any more because the only person who knows how to make it is Dr. Pim, Dr. Hank Pym, who is uh, the original Ant-Man from like, tw- from like 1980s, 1970s, okay. 1980s. Um, basically, um, that they only have enough particles to basically go to where they're going and come back. Yeah. They, don't have enough to, they don't have enough to do anything more than that. And so what they end up doing here is that um, Tony Stark basically convinces Captain America here that, like, okay, there is a time where the Space Stone is there. I know exactly where it is. Yeah. It's like, are you sure, certain? Because if we go, we can't get back. 
Yeah. So they know exactly where the space stone is and where more pin particles are at. So they give the staff, they give the mind stone and staff to uh, Ant Man here, who goes back to 2023, and now Captain America and Iron Man are going to go back to 1970. So you go back to the base apparently where um, Captain America was born. The idea of Captain America, you yeah, know, not necessarily yeah. the guy, but the home of Captain America. Yeah, it says so. Yeah, um, and you get and we get our Stanley cameo, mm-hmm. in which he passes by and, and you make war, not you make love, not war. war. He's like a hippie. And he drives by. Um, what I'm told here is that it's it's a is it's a recording of him, but it's a but it's a guy who did like the mocap for it, and they digitally painted on Stan Lee's face from okay. what he would have been like forty or fifty years ago at this point here. Okay, because obviously, unfortunately, Stan Lee has passed, passed away. away. Yeah, very unfortunately. Um, we will not, you know, unfortunately, we'll probably never see him in any more Marvel movies here because yeah. it's very yeah. difficult to do that. It's very sad on a certain level. You considering like it is. I was pleased to see that they included that. I I wasn't sure how they did it because I didn't know if it was recorded, you know, prior to his passing or. Because mm-hmm. the last one that he that he recorded here would have been the one in Captain Marvel, in which he's going to go read for Mall Rats in 1990s, which yeah. is yeah. which again, um, the guy who did is Kevin Smith who did Mall Rats here, didn't know that didn't know that particular element of the movie, you know, and. It, so basically, like, Stan Lee was going to go audition for his movie in 1990s. So he's a part of the Marvel continuity, That's which is kind good. of a very cute little thing for him because he's, yeah. he's a huge comic book fan, as a, a fan essentially. He's an entire podcast devoted to it. Oh, cool. So, um, so basically, they go back to 1970, and so Captain America, they're sneaking into the um, base camp here. Captain America is going to go get the Pym particles, while Iron Man is going to go get the uh, Space Stone here, and he goes the and, Tesseract. The Tesseract at this point, yes. Um, he goes and gets the stone here, but in the middle of it, he meets his father. Who, yeah. Again, for him, he hasn't seen in what feels like, you know, well, his no, he's been gone quite a while. Well, no, so like his dad dies in like the '90s here, I guess, when. Iron Man is like in his teens or early 20s so in theory like by the time this is 2023 he hasn't seen his dad in like 30 years and it's his young dad from when he was when his dad was just like they're expl- his dad is explaining yeah I'm having a kid here very soon yeah he hasn't been born yet he hasn't been born yet but he's going to be here very soon um, and so like it's prime dad yeah, like, and, it's the and, best of the dad you're ever going to get. Do you have children? Yes, I have a five-year-old daughter. Yeah, um, and so they have this very sweet and touching moment sort of thing, and yeah. he gives them a hug, and like, it's very cute and sentimental here because like he gets to get, he gets to meet his dad one more time. Well, but yeah, and but his dad doesn't really understand why he's getting hugged. No, he doesn't. He's, yeah, you know, he, but he clearly is, thinks that's a little off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, for good reason. I mean, yeah. like this random yeah. stranger. Kind of, kind of looks a little odd with the but, but he has the conversation in which they talk about you know, he doesn't know what the father doesn't know what kind of dad he's going to be and mm-hmm. and he and Tony Stark says well I remember my dad he was really tough on me but it's the good times I remember yeah so uh, that was sweet he also passes on his great line that he gave that his dad gave him you know it's like no amount of money ever bought a second worth of time yeah and so so that's kind of a interesting thing that that's just going to be something between the two of them that will just pass on forever. Yeah. Um, so it's a really kind of sweet moment here. But then Captain yeah. America kind of gets his own sweet moment as well. So as he's getting the pin part, as he's collected the pin particles, you actually see a very young, um, God, why can't I, but I'll put his name in here later. You see a very young Hank Pym. Yeah. And you see like the original like version of the Ant-Man mask in his, in his lab here as well. And yeah. so that was, so that's a great little cameo that they got for him as well. Um, so... Captain America steals, and you, and you see Peggy, and you get the, and yeah. So in the process of getting the pin particles, he meets, he sees Peggy Carter again, and yeah. um, he doesn't interact with her, but he basically gets to see her again. And mind you, again, like it's the first time he's seen her, in for him, what was pro- let's say probably like ten years or so by the yeah. time he got in Frozen. But in reality, it's been close to like eighty, ninety years or eighty years since he's seen her. Yeah, if you think that like. It's 2023, and the war happened in, like, 
the, the you 40s, know the mid forties yeah. here. Like so, it's yeah. been close to like eighty years since he's seen her. Yeah. Um. And so, basically, they go back to so they get the they get what they need, and Captain America and Iron Man go back to twenty twenty three. Now, when we go to space here, we've got War Machine and Nebula. And War Machine and Nebula are going to go wait for um, Peter Quill, who's a Star-Lord, to go get the Power Stone. So they basically, cause they know exactly where it is at this point yeah. here. It's just that he kind of knows where it is exactly on this planet. They could spend yeah. days looking for on this planet, yeah. but not quite find it. Yeah. Um, and sure enough... Plus, he can hold it. Well, no, I mean, there's a casing around it, so anybody can hold it right okay. now. Okay. Um, basically, like, this gets the entire intro scene from Guardians of the Galaxy, where like you hear the music playing and he's kind of mm-hmm. dancing along with the music. But he's even then, out. he's rocking out. But again, obviously, none of Nebula and War Machine can't hear the music at all. Yeah. So they're just watching him being an absolute goofball on his own yeah. ter- on his own terms. It's like they're like, he really is an idiot, isn't he? It's like. Yeah. Um, they knock him out, then they go get this the power stone here, and Nebula kind of sacrifices her, not necessarily sacrifices her left arm, but um, there, I guess there's some sort of maybe she Burns did, her hand. Burns her hands, you get down to kind of like a Terminator kind of hand underneath. Yeah. Um, grabs the power stone, gives it to Rhodey. Meanwhile, kind of interspliced here, though, in this is 20, this is 2014. When Guardians of the Galaxy came out, right? Um, there's another Nebula in this timeline. Well, there's the Nebula that was there at the time. Yeah, so there's, there's the Nebula yeah. from 2014, right? And there's also a Gamora from 2014. They're just getting off of some sort of battle and fight here. Yeah, and they meet with their dad Thanos, who basically says, "Hey, we finally found a power. We finally found an Infinity Stone. I'm sending somebody to go and get it." And Nebula starts. Sh- freaking out a little and like somehow like a projection comes from her left eye which has War Machine talking with her and they're like what's going on here? Yeah, it sort of reveals it reminded me a little of the Princess Leia scene with um, in Star Wars, in the first Star Wars Yeah, with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker yeah. sort of like a hologram yeah, sort of the hologram sort of thing yeah. um, It's that sort of thing but it shows Nebula um Nebula talking with War Machine here over yeah. what's going on, and yeah. so they're kind of very much like because in in the in the scene here they were just literally talking about that about getting the Power Stone here. Yeah. Um, so basically, Nebula gets taken in by Thanos, and basically they learn that her mind works on some sort of cloud-based so- software or server sort of thing. Yeah. And that they can access everything in ne- in this other Nebula because now apparently they realize here that wait, there's. There's a shared. There's a, there's a shared network, and somebody else's shared memories are on this network. So what's going on here? And then they eventually, kind of by weaving through her brain here, learn that oh, there's another nebula here. So let's go yeah. collect that nebula. So Nebula is literally about to snap back to 2023 here. Or War Machine has just already done that here. She stops because her brain is being accessed again. Mm-hmm. And so, and that stops her from doing whatever she needs to do. And it's long enough that they basically, 2014 Thanos, Grimora, and Nebula, capture her and take her aboard the ship, and they learn all the stuff that's happening here. So now yeah. Thanos has learned, ah, so I did succeed. Yeah. And this is how I die. Huh, okay. Well, I succeeded, so it doesn't matter. I, my, I did what I wanted to I did what I needed you to do. Too. Yeah. Um, but it's this great moment here where, like, now 2014 Thanos knows what's going to happen and yeah. now can plan for it here. He's seen the future. Um, and 2014 Nebula basically disguises herself as her 2023 counterpart. She changes clothes. Yeah, apparently there's a faceplate sort of change in the yeah. interim that yeah. she cha- puts on. And she also gets the Pym particles as well. Yeah. So that gives now Thanos the ability to shrink his ship down to small molecular size if he wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's an interesting little wrinkle in the entire story here. Yeah. But the biggest wrinkle, I think, now comes up with the Soul Stone. So if you remember back in Infinity War, the Red Skull here is now, I guess, a, a watcher, I guess, at the end the, of the day. The keeper of the stone. Yeah. Basically explains that you have to give up a life in order to get the Soul Stone. 
You have to, you, no, it's not that you have to give up a life, you have to give up something you love. You have to give up something that you love, yes. Yeah, so, or you have to give up a life that you love. Yeah. And so it's Hawkeye and Black Widow, which is in a sort of very weird sort of situation where it's like, well, like, uh, I'll do it. Uh, yeah. Which one is going to do it here at the end of the day? So you have this, like, basically this fight over who's going to do it. And at the end of the day, uh, Black Widow sacrifices herself to get the They're soul stone. They're both hanging on, yeah, a, no. on a cliff by, by the thinnest of threads. Mm hmm they each want to be the one that sacrifices because they're both in so much pain. Well, they both want to sacrifice themselves, though, for slightly different reasons. Because when you think about it here, Hawkeye wants to sacrifice himself because he doesn't know whether this is going to happen or not, if it's ever going to, if all this is going to work out. And that he would be much happier with death because it would end his suffering and his pain. Right. Versus Natasha's basically like, I can't keep watching everybody be in pain here at the end of the day. It really bothers me, so I need to resolve this the only way I know how which is to sacrifice myself to make sure that my best friend here gets to have his family and life back yeah so Black Widow ends up sacrificing herself when they all get back to 2023 here everyone's very up the original core collection are very upset about it yeah, yeah. Um, but now they've got all the infinity stones they've got all six infinity stones and they break them out of their little containers that they were in if they were there was one um was so the, the tesseract was just a cube and the my in the staff here and then um at the same time uh the power stone just had to be opened up yeah um and so iron man with the help of bruce banner and rocket raccoon create a new infinity gauntlet with tony stark sort of nanotech sort of technology right um and that allows them to basically um create a new Infinity Gauntlet as where the left, where the one from Infinity War was a left-handed one. This one is a right-handed one. So they're going to do the right thing now. That's cute. I think so. Because um, if you do the left side, it's usually considered the wrong side. Right, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So everyone returns. They create this Infinity Gauntlet and they initially are fighting to who's going to do, do it here first. Thor wants to do it because he's the god of thunder and he's, he's, he will basically be able to survive it he thinks but again yeah. obviously like he's not still in a good place yeah um and he's kind of a kind of a screw up at this point yeah no like i think he realized that he's a, he, I think everyone's realized he's basically at this point in his life he's a screw up and yeah don't let him around heavy machinery yeah, yeah. this is this is the most of heavy machinery that you're ever going to yeah. get yeah um but bruce banner basically steps up and says look like i'll do it i'm basically gamma radiation as it is yeah so I should be able to handle it here. Um, and the gauntlet, when you first see it, is a very small human-sized gauntlet. Right. And it just expands to be, you know, this Hulk-sized gauntlet, which is very cool. Yeah, it because, is cool. But at the same time, Hulk's the same size as Thanos, so now you've got this really big gauntlet in your yeah. hand. So. Yeah. Um, but what ends up happening, so the Hulk puts on the glove, snaps his fingers... And they're initially not sure if it actually works or not, if everyone comes yeah. back. But then Hawkeye's phone starts ringing, which which is clever, conveniently just left slightly outside of the testing area they were doing yeah. it at. And it's his wife calling him, wondering where he is. Yeah. So it worked. It worked. But in the interim here, Nebula goes to this, where they did all the time travel stuff, turns on the, turns on the machine. 2014 to, Nebula. 2014 Nebula. Turns on the machine to summon 2014 Thanos and his warship here. It basically gets summoned, grows to full size again, and the second they realize that they were successful with the snap, it bombards the the Avengers campus, essentially, and destroys it. Um, to the point where it's, it's a giant mound of rubble and wreckage. Um, it's pretty definitive. It's gone. Oh yeah, no, no. It's not. It's not coming back in later movies. Yeah. So, um, you got the Hulk who um, who's taken off the glove here now. He's he's now in the bowels of the basement here, essentially holding up the roof with his one good uh, left hand still, because his right hand's pretty badly damaged That's from right. the, from even just holding on to the Infinity Gauntlet. 
Um, and you've got War Machine and Rocket Raccoon underneath, underneath there as well that are kind of trapped. So Ant-Man is still active and he goes down to go get them and save them. Because um, he's small so he can kind of fit through all the crevices and yeah. everything, so he's yeah. perfect for that. Yeah. Um, Hawkeye finds himself in, I guess, in sort of, sort of like sewery sort of like tech crawl space, I guess. Yeah. Um, and he's got the Infinity Gauntlet with him, thankfully. So he's so he can he's got the Infinity Gauntlet right near him, so he's going to hold on to that thing. Yeah. Um, but he hears something behind him and then realizes, ah, we've got I've got these guys from Infinity War, the little kind of monstery sort of like forearm dudes. Yeah. coming after him. Yeah. So he starts running. Um, but then up at top, um, you've got Nebula who is meeting Thanos. Thanos is kind of beamed down from his spaceship down to um, down to the planet here, down to the wreckage here. He kind of just takes his weapon and takes his helmet off and just kind of just sits there and is like, you know, like, you go grab the, you go grab the Infinity Stones. What are you going to go do, Dad? I'm going to wait. And he just kind of sits there and just kind of like, do, 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 do. I don't know if he sings this song to himself. It'd be kind of cute if he was. Oh boy. Um, Iron Man wakes up and he's got his Iron Man suit on. Captain America's got his shield and everything. Um, and him and th- him, the two of them meet up with one another and wake up uh, from the attack. But Thor's been kind of just standing outside looking at Thanos and basically was like, there he is. I can't believe he came back. How did he get here? Like, doesn't matter. Yeah. He's here. Yeah. What has he been doing? Nothing. He's just been standing around, you know, waiting, it looks like. Well, good. He doesn't have the gauntlet yet, so it looks like we're going to go have to fight him. Yeah. And Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America basically was like, you know, this is a trap, right? It's like, yeah, but, you know, we're walking into it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, and so Thor summons his weapons. He got he has the hammer. He has Milnor in his left hand, and he's got Stormbreaker, his axe, in his right hand, and he both the lightning comes down and so his his beard gets braided all of a sudden and his hair gets kind of braided as well cleaned very up a little bit cleaned up a little bit he doesn't quite look as fat as he did beforehand but like a little more svelte but not completely not there. completely no no you can still see you can still see the hunch on him yeah um and so basically they go down to thanos and then there's like look like clearly this is the point in which thanos um tells them like look I was successful, but clearly it wasn't successful enough because I left enough of you around who remembered what happened. And apparently yeah. this was, you know, so my plan did succeed, but it did, it had a hitch. So now I'm just going to remake the entire universe from scratch and, f- and destroy everything else. I can wipe all of you out. Yeah. So it's, you know, you know, now. And it's, and it's that matter of, of, of people couldn't get beyond their grief. Absolutely. No. And, and which is kind of a kind of an endearing part of the story here that everyone was such a good family member and everyone was such a tight knit community that you, that regardless you couldn't get over any of it at all. Yeah. So. So now basically it's Captain America, Thanos versus Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor versus Thanos, and they're putting up kind of a very interesting fight along the way here. So. Because um, obviously, Captain America is just. A slightly powered human, Iron Man is a man in a in a suit of armor, which gives him a lot of strength and power. And Thor is a god at the end of the day here yeah. with with magical hammers and axes. Yeah. Um. So they're fighting one another here. Um. For for a bit here, um, there's some cool bits where um. Basically, Thor supercharges uh, Iron Man uh, with energy that shoots into Thanos, which kind of melts them a little bit but not by much um meanwhile hawkeye has gotten rid of his uh chitari um pursuers here which is the warriors for uh thanos yeah and uh he meets 2014 nebula unbeknownst to him shortly before this though we've got nebula 2000 2014 gamora in 2023 um nebula Having a conversation. Having a conversation where, like, what happens to us in the future? And Nebula basically goes, like, hey, I try to kill you a bunch of times, but we eventually become friends and we actually become sisters. Because Nebula is trying to tell her sister, Gamora, here that, like, look, like, you know this is wrong. Yeah. You know, and the reason I know this is wrong is because you told me you know where the Soul Stone is. 
Yeah. And that you purposely weren't going to tell your dad here, you weren't going to tell Thanos because you didn't want him to succeed. Yeah. So she already knows, so the older version of Nebula knows that the younger version of Gamora basically is like, look, I know you don't want this to happen at all. Yeah. Help me stop this. Yeah. So they go down and 2014 Nebula takes, tries to take the gauntlet here. The... 2023 Nebula and Grimora here basically approach her. It's like, don't do this. You know this is wrong. You can't do this here. 2014 Nebula is so Stockholm Syndrome that he has that she has to do whatever her dad tells her that she can't break away from it all. Um, and so 2023 Nebula ends up killing her younger self. Um, and Hawkeye collects the gauntlet here and tries and starts taking it back upstairs to where everyone else is. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, um, you've got, uh, Thanos is knocked out Iron Man. Thor is doing a pretty good job of beating up Thanos, but he loses Mjolnir at one point here. And, um, in calling back the Stormbreaker axe, Thanos kind of gets it and starts trying to do the same thing that, uh, Thor did to him. We're trying to push the axe head into his chest. Yeah. Meanwhile, to the distance, you see the hammer lift up and fly past Thanos and lands in the hands of Captain America. Okay, so now this harkens back to a scene earlier in the movie, like very early in the movie. No, not this one, though. Not this movie. You're right. So in, in the previous... In, in, in Age of Ultron, the second Avengers movie. Okay. The, the, the scene in which Captain America starts to lift the hammer and mm -hmm. you see it actually begin to shift and then he, he pretends he can't pick it up and he puts it down so yeah so there's a scene in um age of ultron here where they're all kind of sitting around joking around it's this famous scene where everyone tries to go are and you lift worthy the are you worthy can everyone goes to try to lift a hammer here and everyone else fails dramatically they can't lift it at all but um captain america goes to grab it here and it shifts ever so slightly and thor yeah. has this look on his face like Ooh. Well, wait, hold on. Can he actually do it? And Captain America, it, it's unknown again, like whether Captain America actually could lift it or not, or if he was kind of like faking it out that, you know, like, oh, I lifted it, it li I made it move just ever so slightly, I won't do it anymore here at all. Yeah. Um, so then Captain America is wiel wielding Milnor, and theoretically, like, supposedly the powers of Thor, because that's what the yeah. hammer does. Yeah. Whoever shall be worthy, she shall hold this hammer and have the power of Thor. So he's calling up the lightning. He's using it with his shield to kind of uh, batter it back and forth. So he's basically, like, you know, he's basically like every Dungeons and Dragons character that's ever been a uh, meat shield or tank that's got a sword and shield, or in this yeah. case, a hammer and shield. And he's just wrecking. Uh, he's <laughs> wrecking uh, Thanos here, but Thanos, I guess knocks the hammer away from him here at one point and with his own like double bladed sword is hacking at the Captain America shield and it's falling in pieces and it's, it's, it's literally crumbling to pieces not unlike when Tony Stark in his mind saw when he when he held when when Scarlet Witch came during Age of Ultron kind of whispered into his head the thoughts the visions here the vision was of the future where everybody's kind of dead and Captain America's shield here is literally broken in a very similar way. It's like cracked and broken here. Um, so it, does, it harkens back to that. So now Captain America's got like this half battered shield. He's been knocked away a little bit. And Thanos has got this great little monologue here. He's like, look, in all the worlds I've ever had to purge and all the worlds I've ever been to, I never took pleasure in any of that. Your planet though, I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy, enjoy this, I'm going to yeah. enjoy this. Yeah. And he summons down his entire army. So all of his other ch the children of Thanos are back here with all those individual little bad guy, mini boss bad guys they had to kill before in the last movie yeah. and his entire war front, all these, you know, Chitari enemy things. They're just, his entire army is now there. Yeah. And Captain America like straps on his shields like, okay, time to do this. And he hears in his, uh, so everyone's kind of got this little kind of like ear earpiece uh, connector on them, and basically he hears a little static in his ear, and he says, you know, and he hears his friend the Falcon on your left, which is a callback to Winter Soldier when 
he was running in the very early scenes when they're running around and Falcons were doing a single lap of what Captain America did like 17 in here. Yeah. And Captain America would every time would say like on your left when he's passing him on his left. Yeah. Um, so he turns around and there's Black Panther and, uh, and his sister and his captain of the guard, Okoye. Yeah. You know, and they're coming through a portal that's made, that's the same kind of portal that the wizards make. Yeah. Um, and from the distance here, Falcon kind of flies out as well, does kind of a little circle around him. Um, another portal opens up and the Guardians of the Galaxy come out with Doctor Strange and there flies Spider-Man as well. And he's, and, you know, they're there. Other portals start opening up and you start getting... You have a whole sky of portals. You have a whole collection of portals here and you've got the army of Wakanda kind of coming out here. And their warships that they have. And then you have the wizards that are back all of a sudden as well that are there, that are being summoned in. Um, you've got uh, Ant-Man is now rescued. Um, Thor is now uh, rescued. Uh, Hulk, Rocket Raccoon, and War Machine. And War Machine's got a new armor on. It's very similar to um, what I think was the Iron Patriot, which is a, another bit from the comics. It's a much more heavily decked out kind of armor. Yeah. Because um, he ditched the last armor. Um, and um, then you've also got Asgard's there, Asgardians there as well. So you've got Valkyrie on a Pegasus, which is very cool. Which is very cool. Um, and then you also get uh, Scarlet Witch comes back out there as well. You have uh, Pepper Potts shows up in her uh, own armor. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a character called Re- the an armor that they call Rescue in the um, comics. Um, it was meant for Pepper Potts to have her own armor, but it didn't have. But all the technology that Iron Man had, which was meant for like fighting, he was meant to save people because Pepper Potts wasn't about being a superhero at right. all. She just wanted to help people. Um, so basically, everyone kind of like gets together. Iron Man wakes up. Thor wakes up. You know, everyone kind of gets together into that big kind of initial sort of like gathering together and then Captain America utters like Avengers assemble and then they charge off toward Thanos and this is huge climactic battle of like ah well in the meantime you still have Thanos's ship yeah well mind you it hasn't done anything just yet but it's got but again you have almost every single character that's ever been in any Marvel movie almost every superhero that's ever Everything. existed yeah. it's there you know like You've got Groot, you know, Mantis, Dr. Strange. Everybody's back. Everybody's back. The only person that I didn't see come back, which would have been on the evil side, that I would have liked to have seen was Kirk Russell. True. But by that point, he would have been gone as well, though. He wasn't snapped away. He was killed. He was killed. That's true. That's true. So. Okay. You're right. You're right. But again, basically all the good guy superheroes that have ever existed are back. um, And they go and they fight. And they have the most f- epic fight of fights. Yes, they do. Um, meanwhile, in the middle of it, though, what's the kind of the subtext of the fight here, though, is that Hawkeye has got the gauntlet here, and they're trying to get the. They realize that they got to send the gauntlet, they got to send the stones back in time to return to their original place here. Right. Once they're back in their original places here, Thanos can't go back and get it at all. They'll just destroy right. the time machine and let it be and let it be gone at that yeah. point. They can build a new time machine later. Right. Um, but the stones will be gone, and then Thanos can't get to him at all because Thanos won't know where they went. So um, what ends up happening here is that um, Hawkeye passes it over to Black Panther. Black Panther takes it for a while here, but then passes it on to Peter Parker. Um, but even before he actually passes it on to Peter Parker here, um, you've got all these really kind of great cool shots of characters doing stuff with each other. So you've got yeah. Iron Man and Rescue kind of circling each other and doing all their attacks and everything. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man comes and saves Iron Man, and this is the part I choked up at, was Tony Stark seeing seeing you know Spider-Man, Spider-Man. And, Sp- and Iron Man just leans in and gives him a hug. Yeah. And, it's, and Spider-Man's like, oh, well, this is nice. This is... And that, that for me, because it was, again, that it was... was a, a little sustained hug, too. Yeah, and it was Iron Man was basically like, this is the, you know... This, the him embracing somebody else is very unusual. He doesn't embrace a lot of people at all. Yeah. The fact that he thought of Spider-Man as kind of almost his own kid on a certain level yeah. is very kind of, you know, like, hey, this is this is my guy. Because I basically brought him into this here, and yeah. it's all my fault that he got snapped away to begin with the yeah. first time. Yeah. Um, 
so that I thought that was very sweet. Um, but then at one point here, Spider-Man gets the gauntlet here, and he's got to get it to the van where Ant-Man and the Wasp are trying to get it to ready to get send it back in time. Um, yeah. And so um, there's this great prolonged chase scene here where they're trying to where Spider-Man's avoiding everybody but trying to run to the to the van. Um, Scarlet Witch and Thanos meet each other, and Scarlet Witch basically is like, you're going to regret ever meeting me again. And Thanos is like, I don't even know who you are. I was like, no, you will. You will remember me. Yeah. And she just wrecks him. Yeah. Her telekinesis powers are just too much for Thanos. Thanos basically says, just take the ship, bombard the planet. And even his own children are like, but you're going to kill you're going to kill some of us as well. I was like, just do it. Yeah. And the ship starts bombarding the all of his own soldiers and all the other superheroes. The wizards put up their own little barrier shields to stop it. And while it's bombarding the planet, the ship, they turn their attention to something else in space. They they start instead of firing down, they start firing up. And in comes Captain Marvel. She just flies straight down um, through the spacecraft, through the spacecraft, and just a couple times and just wrecks the spaceship. Thanos just overcome, just like, no, I like that spaceship. I just finished paying for it. Yeah. He's got that look on his face, like, no. Yeah. Um, and then so Spider-Man is being still pursued here at this point here, and now at this point here he's trying to move forward, but he gets kind of stopped because of the bombardment. And then Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, shows up to Peter Parker, and Peter Parker's like, hi, I'm Peter, you know, yeah. Uh, I'm Peter Parker. And Carol Danvers has got this great, he got this great kind of like way of saying it's like, "Hi, Peter Parker, got something for me?" Yeah, but how are you going to get through it? Oh, I'll manage. And then all the female superheroes are all together. So it's a callback to a comic line that was in 2016 called A Force, which is basically an all females Avengers team. Which I would love to see another movie for if we ever get a chance to do that. That was actually a cool scene because because you had. Every female superhero, mm -hmm. in, including um, Pepper. Yeah, and Pepper Potts, Mantis, yeah. Valkyrie. Um, I don't know if Neb. I, I want to say Nebula and Gamora were there, but I'm not entirely certain at that point. I don't remember seeing them necessarily. Well, Nebula and Gamora had their own cute scene, in which um, uh, they meet back with Peter Quill and yeah, like, and Nebula and basically like Gamora he saves Peter Quill, but Peter's like. Gamora, you're still alive, and, and he goes he to try to embrace, her. go to try to embrace her, and Gamora just basically knocks him down to the ground, and Nebula comes to him, and is like, and Gamora's like, really, I chose him. Yeah. He's like, well, you should have seen your other choices. Yeah, your other choices were, uh, Drax. were, were, were a tree and a, and, and a, a raccoon and a raccoon. So it was yeah. like, oh, all right. Um. So basically, A Force, Captain da um, Captain Marvel here. Uh, gets the gauntlet pretty close to the van, but then um, Thanos throws, I guess, his double-bladed sword at the van and destroys the van, which causes a huge explosion. Carol Danvers gets knocked backwards and drops the gauntlet. Thanos literally goes to grab the glove at this point and puts goes to, goes to put it on his hand. Iron Man kind of comes in and stops him for just like a half a second, but doesn't isn't able to stop him. He puts on the glove and he's got the Infinity Gauntlet on him again. So he's ready yeah. to snap his fingers. But then Carol Danvers comes in and stops him from doing that. And then you quickly realize that Carol Danvers is stronger than the Infinity Gauntlet and Thanos combined. Yeah. As Thanos goes to like punch her in the face and she basically is like, Yeah, that didn't do anything to me. Doesn't even doesn't even like flinch or move back at all. Just yeah. dink like punching into like a metal side. Yeah. Um, it's to the point here where Thanos literally has to take off the power gem, put it in his left hand, and then punch her in order to be able to do anything to her to knock her back. Yeah. Uh, Iron Man has looked at Doctor Strange, and Doctor Strange is like holds up one single finger, and so then Iron Man kind of like knows what he has to go do here. So yeah. Iron Man goes to try to stop Thanos, grabs, try to get a hold of the gauntlet to steal it away from Thanos. In his unsuccessful, Thanos just bats him away like a fly. Um, Thanos looks at Iron Man and is like, I am inevitable. And he goes to snap his fingers one more time to change the entire universe forever. And doesn't. Meanwhile, you, you come to realize that he turns his hand over. 
all the gems are gone. They're yeah, not there the anymore. Stones are gone. Yeah. Iron Man has collected all the stones with the and put them in his in his own hand. Yeah. And now it's like basically frying him at this point here. All this power coursing through him. He snaps his own fingers, and that's what destroy. And he does his own snap. Yeah. And that snap destroys all of Thanos' army. It dusts every single bad One guy. Yeah. It dusts all of his warships and creatures here. And at the very end, Thanos kind of like sits down and realizes it's going to happen to him. And he gets dusted into existence as well. Yeah. So, um, so unfortunately, Iron Man ends up like dying from this. He has one last moment with Peter Parker and War Machine and Pepper Potts. Um, and then we begin, like... Well, and Pepper Potts very sweetly tells him, you can go rest now. Yeah. Which I thought was nice. Yeah, it was kind we, of like... We, it's, we have this, we have this. And yeah, we, we, we got this, you're going to be okay. You can go to sleep now, it's all right. Yeah. Because, you know, Iron Man has famously never been able to let anything go. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so Iron Man is now dead. Now we get to kind of the uh, very end of it here. We've got... Um, Everyone kind of goes back to where they were. Kind of goes back to where they were. So Black Panther returns to lead his people once again. Yeah. Um, Peter Parker returns uh, back to school and meets his buddy from school again. Yeah. Um, then you've got um, uh, Thor. It, they have this wonderful little uh, funeral for for Tony, where like. Yeah. The gift that Pepper gave him at the very first movie here, like uh, proof that Tony Stark has a heart, which is his very first arc reactor. They put that into the ocean, into the into the lake, lake. here, and you kind of get this montage of all the characters, is like everybody who's ever been in any one of these movies here, you know. So you go through like the initial main main ones here, Hulk, and you get through Ant Man and his guys. You get back to Thor and the other Falcon and all the other guys here. Um, you eventually see. Nick Fury once again and yeah. Captain Marvel, which are at the very, very back. A uh, little disappointed that that uh, Samuel L. Jackson didn't have more, didn't have a role in this movie here. But yeah, there wasn't. There wasn't. It was interesting to see who they qu sort of left out because at the end of of the um, Captain Marvel movie, mm -hmm. you know, the, the who who are we paging? Yeah, and so you kind of thought that that would be. That she would she would have more of a I mean even her role is kind of in the whole movie is kind of passing. Yeah, but at the same time here also Carol it's Danvers. Critical, but yeah, it's very critical. But Carol Danvers is also by just sheer power level the strongest of all the Marvel characters at this yeah. point here. She, yeah, and it's almost this notion here that like, if you had her here, like it's an unfair it, advantage. It would be an unfair advantage, and the movie yeah. would end pretty quickly. I'm yeah very curious to see future movies with Captain Marvel. Um, like it will be a crime and shame if Samuel Jackson doesn't come back to manage Captain Marvel at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah. Um, and I think they're kind of setting it up with later movies here, but um, um, but let's just we'll finish this yeah. first movie here. So yeah. you've got um, so again, so Thor at this point here goes to Valkyrie and says, Valkyrie, you're now the queen of the Asgards. You can be the ruler here. I'm not meant to do this here at all. I'm gonna go. Don't want to be king. I don't want to be king. I'm gonna go try something else. Yeah. Um, and he decides he's going to join the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. Um, and they have this lovely little bit with uh, Quill, who's basically looking for Gamora at this point here. Yeah. Uh, or 2014 Gamora. Yeah. Nebula is there, and everybody's there, and they're kind of like, you know, and Thor, and they're basically like, you know, I'm the leader of this ship, right? He's like Thor is like, yeah, 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 you're you're the leader. Yeah. Winkingly, sort of. Yeah. There's this great little tension here. I'm very curious how that'll that'll play in the next movie. Because Thor keeps moving the map and and, and switching screens. Yeah, and he's very right. much thinks like he's in control of everything. And he's, cause he's, oh no, it's your ship. It's your yeah, ship. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's your ship. Your ship. You guys should have a you guys should have a fight with one another. Blasters or knives, and everyone's kind of like chiming in and wants to see a fight happen. And they're and they're both just like, <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't need to fight. No, no. So. That'll be an interesting dynamic. I'm curious to see how that'll how to, that'll play. Um, I'm very curious as well because you go back to the entire events of the Thor, of the third Guardians of the Galaxy movie. They were um, in production here, which means they had kind of had to know what was going to happen with the Endgame, Endgame movie here. And it was curious that um, the character for Thor, uh, Chris Hemsworth 
wasn't being a vocal part of the um, movie here because nobody at that point knew that he was going to be in the third movie. They were keeping that in the yeah. third Guardians of the Galaxy movie. They're keeping that pretty under wraps here. Um, so it's curious whether because that movie was technically supposed to come out either this year or next year, because when they fired James Gunn, they had to put the entire production on hold. They were literally right. in pre-production at that point, getting ready to start shooting here within a couple of weeks when he got fired over really dumb reasons. Um, so it's curious um, about that to me. It makes me want to go back in time and do some more research on that. Yeah. Um, so um, Hawkeye... Um, rejoins his own family here. Everyone kind of just rejoins yeah. back kind of where they were beforehand. Yeah. Um, but you got Captain America is basically, he's got to go back and put everything back where it was. So he's got to go take all the Infinity Stones and put them back where they were supposed to be. Um, he kind of has to do it as well because he's also got Mjolnir with him as well. Yeah. So he needs to return that back to the time in which it was supposed to be at. So he's got to take that back with him. Um, it has to go back to it, Asgard. It has to go back to Asgard. It'd be kind of curious um, because he's got to go back to put the soul stone back. How do you put the soul stone back? And that's the red hood. Because of, because you're trading a life for well, you're trading a life, life for another love. life. Yeah. But how do you a put that back to where where it was supposed to be? Because Thanos has to come back and get it himself. Uh, but you've also got the red skull there as well. Like, what's the red skull to? How are they going to interact with each other? Because they were enemies in the very first Captain America. Right, but he's returning something, so maybe there's honor among thieves. I don't know. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, no, yeah. So, Hulk basically is managing kind of the time machine sort of thing here. Yeah. And the notion is that, okay, well, it'll just be like 10 seconds to us, but it could be, you know, a bit for Captain America because he's going to go back and put all the gems back where he, yeah. where they found them at. Yeah. And so, um, and you've got the Falcon and Winter Soldier there as well. We're kind of watching him. Yeah. And so Hulk basically goes to tr bring uh, Captain America back, and he doesn't come back at all. Yeah. Like he just like, he jumps past his time thing. Apparently, he just they he, he doesn't come back. Right. Um, and then they kind of look off to the distance, and they realize, oh hey, what's that over there? There's an old man over there, and they kind sitting of sitting on a bench, looking out out at the water. Walk up to him, and it's, they realize it's Captain America, but he's like 80 80 years old or no, yeah. it's actually probably like 100 because if you assume that he was like maybe 19 20 years old when he became Captain America yeah. during the war here yeah. and you know in the 40s here and means you would have had to have been born in the 20s and now that we're in 2023 he's got to be close to like 100 years old yeah. maybe yeah and Captain America stayed back in time he went back he went back in time to have a life with Peggy Carter yeah um and he basically gives up the... He no longer needs the shield anymore, so he gives it to the Falcon. And the Falcon's like, you know, hey, like this is going to be weird not having a Captain America in the world anymore. I was like, no, there, you'll be the new Captain America. You know? yeah. so, so now the Falcon is, the Captain, is now the new Captain America, which all this very much ties into the comics where at one point here, uh, Captain America loses his super soldier formula and just super ages rapidly. Um, and now it's too old to be the superhero he was before he yeah. passed the shield on to the Falcon. Yeah. So it'll be nice to see if this older actor still plays a role in the in the movies here as like the old Steve Rogers here. Because okay. that would be my wish at the end of the day. Okay. Um, and then the movie just kind of ends after that with this very loving sort of th scene where you've got Peggy Carter and, and Captain America kind of just dancing with each other against the music in what you suppose like the 1950s, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So and then the movie ends and it's this very nice moment that it ends on, but it's also this very kind of sad moment because you're like, we're never probably going to see these characters again, or at least not all together like this. Yeah. So. So I so so. Now that you've gone through the storyline, I, I thought it it gave fitting ends. Oh yeah, no, no. I to, to both Iron Man and Captain America. Yeah. I, I mean, really fitting ends. Tony gets gets to gets to die having having given the ultimate sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is a throwback to what he did in the first Avengers because he was the guy who was willing to send the nuke to space yeah. to stop it from destroying New York and saving a bunch of other lives. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, I thought I thought that's that's a fitting a fitting end. Yeah. And then um, and then Captain America gets his happiness because you see him. You know, he carries around that picture mm -hmm. 
all the time. Yes. Matter of fact, that that picture that he carries around is kind of what saves him when he meets the two thousand or the, the twenty twelve uh, yeah. Iron Man. Yeah. No. Yeah. Again, it falls out of his pockets and how where, how why where did, did you, you get that? Yeah. 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 So, um, so clearly he you know he talks about that 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 was the one that got away. Mm-hmm. Um. And and don't let that happen. Yep. So. He gets to have his life, which which as well is a fitting end. Yeah, so because again, he's been basically what was um, as a trope called caveman out of time sort of thing, but yeah. not really. I mean, like it's played up that he's like an older guy here, but like he fits in well with the modern times. Yeah, um, which yeah. might be kind of interesting. You think uh, like he goes back in time, he could in theory kind of stop all these bad things from happening, but he doesn't at all. You know, he lets everything kind of happen. Well, because you don't want to change. I mean, you don't want to warp time. No. But, I mean. Yeah. I thought it was fitting. Yeah, so, very, very so fitting. Before, the, so the afternoon that we went to the movies, we went mm-hmm. in the evening. But that afternoon, um, you know, I'd read various things about here's the order you should watch the movies in mm-hmm. so that you get it. And I'm like, I don't have, you know, 27 hours to watch all the movies. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and all. Um, your your brother hooked me up with a really nice video crash course, which was about forty five minutes. Yep. And that worked really well. So you'll post the link to that. Yes, I will. I'll grab the link. We'll put that on our show notes here on our website. Okay. So that was really helpful to me. And then he replayed for me key scenes, like the elevator scene, like the picking up of of the hammer scene. Mm-hmm. He he replayed for me specific scenes. Yeah. So that I would have um, context. So that was really helpful because I've seen the other movies, well, most of them, um, but I, you know, I don't remember all the details. So. No, yeah. And and it definitely is not a movie that stands alone. No, no. This is. I mean, you could theory. I mean, I think if you watch the first Infinity War and then watch the, this, you could have like a nice two part movie at the end of the day that you could kind of. You could you could watch and. Maybe not understand all the stuff happening in it. But if you hadn't seen C- Civil War, you wouldn't understand the whole thing. Between... The elevator scene. No, yeah, there's a greater context that you would miss a lot of it. From, well, just so. the distrust between between Tony and Steve. Yeah, no, again, that's why did they break up and so forth? You're like, yeah, yeah like it's one of this is this is very much one of those movies in which if you hadn't seen any of the other movies. A lot of stuff that's happening in this movie would just go right over your head really quick. And You'd because, be left wondering why. But a lot of it was also kind of like a tribute show almost at the at the end of the day. Like, here's all the really cool events that happened, and here's all kind of them, you know, like, again, going back to, like, the 2012 battle for New York, I mean, like... Yeah. Even the Hulk goes down there, and it was like, you know, while you're out there, maybe if you just kind of smashed a couple stuff here, and Hulk's, like, ripping his shirt, it's like, yeah, I think it's a little bit uh, gratuitous, gratuitous, but... All right, and he's going through. He's like, "Ah, oh, Hulk, angry." He's like, half-heartedly smashing stuff, which is very funny. Like, uh, again, like it's one of those kind of movies here where if you didn't watch the stuff before it here, like, and you didn't know all the details here of everything kind of happening in the background, like, you're gonna be lost through a good portion yeah. of this movie. It, it won't have as great of or a significant sort of context for you, I would imagine. Okay, so the other big complaint was. Um that I've heard voiced was that it's too long. And I want to I want to tell you I didn't think it was too long. Um I actually felt like it moved pretty briskly. Okay, if you watch all the previews, you can, you know, add another half hour to your movie time, but Yes, yeah, so it was basically what feels like a 3 3 in a 3 hour or 3 hour 15 yeah, movie. Yeah. But um I actually didn't feel I felt like it needed every moment that it took. Yeah. So so I didn't have a, a problem with the with the length of it. No, I I think a lot of people have a problem with the length of it before they watch it. I think a lot of it's just that context. It like, sounds long. This is a three-hour movie. Wow. Yeah. What, are we watching Lawrence of Arabia or something? Or? Yeah, I've watched Lawrence of Arabia. It's okay. Yeah, um, it's not that great. Uh, it's okay. You yeah. have to understand the context. Yeah. Um, so my overall, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, don't think it stands on its own. So glad I watched the, the sort of crash course first. Found that very helpful. Um the things I enjoyed the most were probably not the things I was supposed to. So, um, enjoyed seeing the human part of, of Tony Stark and seeing him with his daughter and, and oh, all that was of, very cute. It yeah, was it was very cute and it was very well done and very realistic. 
And so I, I enjoyed that. But um, I really enjoyed the, the Bruce Banner embracing his his green. Yeah. Um, the, the... I thought that that was such a such a great message. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I enjoyed Thor. So Thor, I mean, because Thor's kind of an asshole in a general way, mm-hmm. but um, but a campy asshole. So um, I enjoyed him, and I didn't expect to, um, because he had flaws. Was, and he had flaws, flaws you couldn't ignore. His fl- yeah, his flaws were very apparent in things you could not ignore. I mean, I, I think the only one downside that I, that I had with it is that I think they kept making too many jokes at Thor's expense Spence. in yeah. some cases. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it's also just kind of a callback to, like, look, Thor is not in a great place, and here's a way to kind of point point at it. And at the end of the day, like, yeah, come, these characters would probably, like, you know, take them to task for that here. Like, at one point here, when they're trying to fight over who's going to snap their fingers here, you know, Thor is willing to give himself up to do it here. And they're like, no, 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 no. We're good. We're good. We're good. It's like, no. What, what do you think runs through my veins? And Rhodes is, ba- Rhodey is basically like, cheese whiz. <laughs> he does say cheese was. Um, um, but Thor's trying to say thunder. Yeah. Um, there's other moments here where, like, right when Thor gets back and Tony Stark and Rocket are trying to build this time machine here, he's like, out of my way, Lebowski. Yep. Because he very much looks like, like the big Lebowski when you're watching him. Yeah, he does. So. Yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I thought um, I thought seeing somebody, you know, and, and the mother's message, just... Be yourself. Be what makes you happy. And eat a salad. And eat a salad. Yes, she does say that. And you're right. There are a lot of there are a lot of jokes at his expense. There's very a lot of jokes at his expense. But at the end of the day, like ever since like I think Thor Ragnarok, where they haven't quite taken him quite so seriously at the, at yeah. the end of the day, you're like because in Thor Ragnarok, like they they take like what's supposed to be his journey somewhat not quite so seriously at all, which is interesting because like he's been a very serious character. In his, in his last two movies, uh, and the fact that like he's being played now is very not necessarily a bumbling character, but a character with a lot of deep flaws that range a lot more out of outside of not well, just he's being, being played as a screw up. Oh yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I find that interesting because I think it's a very humanizing thing that like the best of us can become not necessarily the greatest of all of us. Well, and I think I think from a different standpoint. You almost kind of have to do that to get him in with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Because the Guardians of the Galaxy are so campy. And they're all screw-ups. And, and they are all screw-ups. That, that, that um, in order for him to truly fit in, I mm-hmm. mean, I know he was in the last one, but in order for him to truly fit in, you kind of have to... Take him down a peg or two. Yeah. 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 So I thought, I thought that, was, that was certainly a part of it, too. But yeah. I liked I liked that they let him be flawed. I appreciate that they let him be flawed. Um, still enjoy Captain America just being Captain America. I mean, again, I mean, I, I, it'll be a shame that we don't get to see Chris Evans in more movies as much anymore doing this role here. I worry if he doesn't get typecasted into stuff now because of this. It'll be interesting to see what he does with the rest of his career. Yeah, yeah I, I he, agree. He's made a point of saying that he wants to get into more director director related stuff here going forward so yeah. that'll be so if that's if that's the direction he ends up going i think that'll be uh, a good thing for him and i'll be interested to see more to see what he does with that yeah i um, agree i would love him to i would love him to come back and do a marvel movie i would think would be very interesting it would be fun or if he does another or if he does like the next captain marvel movie yeah the next captain marvel movie has to have her, her and and um nick fury like bantering with each other because I enjoyed I, I that agree. so much in the first one here. I, I agree. Um, so, but no, yeah, no. Again, I really enjoyed the movie. Again, it's um, it's a really nice send off to what was, you know, this Avengers, yeah. you know, this fitting lo- ending, fitting ending to like this long series of movies that, you know, we were all kind of leading up to this here, yeah. and it's a little bittersweet now that we actually got it because now we're like, we're never gonna get Thanos again, or what? What is this new? big bad guy that we're going to have kind of hanging in the nether here like well Iron Man is gone yeah Iron Man is gone Black Widow is gone although they're making a movie about her so I think it's going to be like a 
a po like a prequel well, or yeah. or something that happened kind of in the past. Um, maybe they'll finally talk about what happened in Budapest between her and Hawkeye, which is always like constantly coming up. Nothing like Budapest, and I was like, yeah, this is not like Budapest. <laughs> um, but um. Uh, so like the next one that kind of comes out here a little bit later on this year is going to be Spider-Man Far Away From Home which takes place after the events of Endgame here so it does deals with a bit of that um, that'll, I think that'll give us kind of our first hintings at what happens in the Marvel Universe going forward now they've already kind of teased that we're going to have a Doctor Strange a second Doctor Strange which will be fun there will be another Black Panther movie um they have a movie called... They're going to be another Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Um, there's going to be another movie called The Eternals, which is kind of a deep space sort of thing. So maybe Captain Marvel will take place in that, maybe. Um, it is curious to see where what happens with the Marvel v. Universe next. Where they um, go with it. Yeah, where a lot yeah. of this will go next. So, um, okay. But I think, that'll, I think that'll do it for us here tonight. Uh I want to thank everybody for listening in for this recap and our thoughts on the movie here. Um, I think we did more recapping the movie than anything else, um, but I certainly enjoyed it a lot. I, I, I really can't wait for this to come out on DVD and to own it again on DVD. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. I'm also just like on pins and needles waiting for Captain Marvel as well. Well, okay, so can I ask you one last question? Sure. Okay, this was your second watching. Did you catch things that you didn't see the first time? No. Okay. I, I was just wondering. I wondered like that too. Like sometimes you watch a movie the first time and then you watch it the second time. He was like, "Oh, I don't remember this scene." So some of that stuff yeah. is not nice. I think it was so hyper focused on watching it when I was watching it that like there wasn't a chance for me to not notice something. Was it better the first time or the second time? Uh, I was better. It was. I think it was best the first time. But okay. getting to watch it with you and and John here was and no really, flurkin. It was flurkin free, which was really too bad. It was. We, we need more flurkin in our lives. We do. So, um, but uh, yeah, so thank you for listening in on this stream and this fun little podcast here. We have a, a very good topic for next week. Um, there will be thrones involved in, be thrones in, involved. in, in next week. So, Ooh. um, so on behalf of myself and my mom, we want to thank you for listening to us. If you want to, uh, learn more about our show and visit our website here at nerdtutorialpodcast.com where we show us all the show notes and details about the the topics that we discuss we also have uh you can reach me out on twitter at nerd underscore tutorial for if you want to leave comments suggest future topics and threads um or any comments about our show we highly recommend feedback there um we'll also be going to fanime uh here in san jose the weekend of the 24th 25th and 26th here so we'll definitely be going a uh, going to those days there we'll give you more information as we get closer to that um and on behalf of myself and my mom we'll thank you so much we'll see you guys next time Bye. Bye.